everybody. It's time for our first guest. Now, he has a blog on the Huffington Post. It's called I'm With Mitt Adventures in Immersia. It's spelled wrong on purpose. Please welcome to the show, Stephen Brickman. Welcome, Stephen. Steve, welcome to Late Night TV. We want to talk about your story here. Now, you worked on the Romney campaign, although you are a Democrat. And so uh, when you went to work for his campaign, uh, you say that you infiltrated uh, right. the campaign and worked there. What does that mean? That's right. Um, uh, it means that, uh, basically, it means that I, uh, I lied to them in the interview. <laughs> no. And how did you, how did you lie to them? I mean, I didn't, like, outright lie or anything. Um, they asked me, they, they didn't ask me if I was going to vote for Mitt Romney because they're in, they're in Boston. They realize they have, you know, a certain population that they have to uh, accommodate mm -hmm. in order to up their staff. But they asked me if I w would be uh, comfortable working for Mitt Romney. And I said, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I, you know, figured they would uh, give me a chair and uh, I'd have a desk, no rim shots on the chair. <laughs> All right, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what happened. Yeah. Um, no, so they were actually very nice in the interview. Mm -hmm. Would I be comfortable? Yes, I'd be comfortable. And, they, uh, and then um, at a certain point in the interview, I uh, remembered that I was Jewish. And uh, I think every like, Jewish kid growing up has had their parents sort of uh, say that the Republicans are much better for Israel than the Democrats. <laughs> I don't even know if that's actually true or not. Yeah. But I, but it, I. But you used like, it in the oh, interview. Wait, Israel. Um, yeah, and I, I said, uh, I said, you know, as a Jew, I, I'm uh, really concerned with uh, what happens to Israel, and I just let them fill in the rest. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah. So you weren't lying; you were just expressing your concerns, and it led to them to believe that you might be voting for Mitt Romney. Right. So <laughs> technically, technically, I guess I never. Now, what was the actual lied. job that you did when you were there? I was a uh, senior user experience designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and strategist. Okay. So that's like I worked on the website. That's basically. <laughs> what I mean. so, and it's just like um, I just sort of said where everything should go. Yeah. That's basically. I would say we could use that, but we just won best website. Yeah. <laughs> best hometown website. USA award. <laughs> On the um, entire web, the best website yeah, out of well, all the for sites. For people that have no money and put out international shows, oh, that's the one we want. Yeah. Uh, you had some weird that's stories. You, you talked about them in your blog, but one of them was about the bathroom. What was this about? Yeah, so this is a, an exclusive to your show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, so I go into the bathroom at, um, at the office. And by the way, I was at the, de the headquarters in the North End, mm -hmm. the main headquarters. So I go into the back, and there's like just the stalls, you know, and they have like normal stalls with normal metal dividers between the stalls. And um, there's like a normal gap that you get. It's like whatever, a quarter inch gap. And one day I go in there and I notice that somebody has like affixed uh, some toilet paper at the top, and then it's running a long, they're running a long strip all the way <laughs> down to cover the gap between the two stalls like the, if you want i mean first of all it's like impossible to even like look from one if you, you'd really have to want to look and then but you said i that, don't know that toilet paper is going to stop you like you said that it, it got taken down but then well it disappeared i mean presumably like you know a janitor or something was probably like, uh. yeah. and then but then i went back and it was back like it came it kept reappearing <laughs> So, so somebody just didn't want people looking at them, I guess. You sure yeah. it wasn't Mitt Romney? It was not Mitt Romney. <laughs> okay. It was definitely not Mitt Romney. He was on the third floor. So. Oh, well, uh, yeah. you had mentioned something when you met Mitt Romney. Something about his handshake. What oh, was it? Fantastic handshake. I mean, say what you want about Mitt Romney, you know, the candidate or the campaign or whatever, but that guy knows how to shake a hand. I mean, he had a <laughs> handshake was like a, it was like a feather bed. It was like a, it was like a, like a Boston cream pie. Like his hand was like softened with these years of, you know, highly expensive moisturizers and, 
It was unbelievable. <laughs> really, yeah. Wow. It was um, really unbelievable. Uh, your, your blog up on the Huffington Post is mentioning a lot of these stories while you were working for the campaign, but I know that you got thrown out of the Democratic National Convention. That's right. What, what happened there when you got thrown out? Um, I was working for National Lampoon at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, my boss, my editor, got us press passes to go to the DNC. This was in 2000, um, Al Gore. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, you know, like, it's kind of their fault for giving press passes to the National Lampoon, right? That's kind of crazy to begin with. Yeah. But then, like, we saw it as a perfect opportunity to promote our website. Mm -hmm. So we made these signs, and we rolled them up. We had them in our coats, whatever. And um, we got there, and we're like, OK, where are our seats? And like, they're up there, and it was like a mile, literally like you know, a half mile up our seats. And we're like, oh, well, that, there goes that plan. And the guy was like, but you can trade them in for floor passes, and you can go down on the floor for five minutes. And we're like, OK, bring it on. And uh, let me just <laughs> preface this by saying that we ruined the experience for all the other Lampoon guys. They were not allowed to go to the DNC after this. <laughs> oh, but, no. Yeah. So we trade in our, our passes. We get the, the floor passes. And my boss, like, he's a huge guy. Literally, like, you know, like, just, uh, just, like, creates a path. Like, just he's, like, you know, he's got, like, a thresher or something. He's, like, you know, like, congressmen are, like, going this way and that. Like, stepped on, you know, the Secretary of State, I don't know. I'm like, it was a mess. It was a, it was a mess. But he got us down to the front of the floor, mm -hmm. and Al Gore's like right there. And he's like, my boss is like, all right, now when you see the red light, that camera's on, so hold up the sign. It's all right, so we're holding up the sign, you know. And um, all of a sudden, they, this troop of Girl Scouts was standing right in front of us, and uh, they hadn't noticed us at all. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, they, like, they start turning around, and they're like, what are you guys doing? What the hell are you doing? And they like start grabbing at me, and they're like grabbing at my sign and S Scott sign. It was my boss, Scott Rubin. Yeah. And they're like tearing them up. They're like Girl literally Scouts like trying to destroy up your so sign. They were, they were, We were so frightened. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. It was like really. And then you got thrown unbelievable. out. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. And then you know, seconds later, like some security guys were on us, and they're like, "You guys got to go." What about the Girl Scouts? Did they get to stay? The Girl Scouts were, they were fine, yeah. They were like <laughs> regulation Girl Scouts. Well. Pre-approved. You've got some interesting stories there. I know that you are taking your, um, your blog stories and you're putting it into a book and it's already written. That's and, right. It's and you're looking written. to get it uh, published, so hopefully we'll see that soon. That's and we right. thank you for coming here and telling your story tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Brickman. Thank, thank you, you, sir. All right. We'll be right back. Right after. <laughs>